today is hero and villain characters. So we're going to dive into that. I hope your comic page and what you're doing on your one frame is coming out well. Last week, I know the guys did some really killer stuff in all the other classes. So as we build up to our putting everything together. Um, and today we'll focus on this part. I'm excited about it. You're, as we get to the cartoon, which is Baton Bunny, one of my all-time favorites. Where does his cuffs go? Just pay attention to that. How does that happen? The joy of cartoons. All right. You'll understand what I'm talking about when you see the film. I love that film. So where do the cuffs go? How do you describe the physics behind that? No idea, but it's still hilarious. So I'm actually working on a painting right now with baton bugs mm, over there. One of my favorite films. Um, Nathaniel asked about why couldn't we get a, like a real orchestra? T kind of backed it up. If you've ever seen Bugs Bunny at the Symphony live, which I got to do last February before everything went wonky, uh, they do Baton Bunny and they do it to a real orchestra and they show the film at the same time the orchestra plays all the music live. And then they play a whole bunch, there's a whole bunch of cartoons, it's pretty incredible. So if you're able to, I'm, they might have it on YouTube or something, if you look up Bugs Bunny at the Symphony and you can watch as a real orchestra plays, yes, to the classic films. So we are going to get started here and I'm going to start with this uh, chat, you'll notice, we just keep it to open chat. So you can keep it on the, make a comment in here. We try to keep things reference to what we're doing. Um, so we don't have private chat, but we do have open chat or you can directly private chat me or Scott, the wizard. All right, let's get into female or we're getting into characters, but we have like hero and villain. And what I want to do is focus because today is International Women's Day, focus on female, a female hero and a female villain, right? And here's the key. We're gonna use shape language and uh, design to help design out our character. And then we're gonna do kind of like a color choice to it. So the nice thing about kind of pulling this off is I don't, it doesn't matter what species your character is, if that makes any sense. So it can be human, it can be animal, you know, like some of you guys do your own characters and that kind of thing, which is super cool. So uh, you can have that kind of either way and see how that works. But I'm going to go human for the hero and the villain. I am going to travel a little bit in space. So I'm going to blend some stuff and then we're going to start with that. But we kind of want to get into shapes and the idea behind shapes. We've kind of talked a little bit about this before. If you're new to this or you haven't seen that class, kind of what shapes do what. So what I'm going to do is start on my piece of paper in the corner and we get into kind of some basic three basic shapes right um square four-sided can be squares rectangles that kind of thing we're just gonna we're gonna show this as a square on what we're pulling off for today so circles circles tend to be friendlier right um they tend to bring about more of the hero side of things more of the good guy if you will circle is like family um bringing everything together so these shapes usually are associated more with heroes than villains and then you have four-sided um shapes like i said squares uh, rectangles that kind of thing and that's has a sense of uh, i'm going to say power to it right so stable stability you'll see henchmen might have you know, it, it could be a, either a hero or villain type, but you're going to see more of like strong, right, boxy. This one has a little bit more personality and friendly. This one has a little less personality, but more strength built in. And then triangles have more of an association with villains, deviousness, that kind of thing. So sharp edges, right? Think sharp edges and how that brings about. So I'm going to use a combination of these shapes today as we get into our drawing of our hero and our villain. So as always, when we go through this, if there is something, if you want to show something at the end, awesome. If you don't, that's fine. But I want to get in and get started. So to think of the character and a personality of who I've got in my, uh, as far as my duo goes, I want to show someone in my hero that's got some power to her, 
Um, and but it's super friendly. So I'm going to start with now when I say circle, it's we're, I'm also talking maybe some oval style shapes, right? Roundness is what we're looking for. No sharp edges. So I'm going to start with kind of an oval sort of right and then i'm going to go classic classic hero pose which tends to be all i'm doing is in my triangles is just getting down initial shapes i'm not actually going to use triangles in the design um but i'm going to use this to just loosely sketch out i want you to do the same thing again i'm going to go human you can go human or creature but i'm gonna do the hands at the hips right and i'm just gonna block it in that's it super simple block it in <laughs> can't draw human ears that's okay um there's a secret to human ears on that and i'll kind of deviate i'll show you a little thing or two so here's my proportions right so in my female character as in even male characters really you'll see if you look at proportionally in a human if you look at the upper body, including the head, compared to the legs, the legs usually make up about the same size, if not a little higher or lower, what the upper body is. So that's just human anatomy. It's kind of cool to look at. So if you ever take pictures of people, you know, that you can see online, or if you've got pictures, look at the proportions of like legs, so lower body to upper body. It's kind of, it's extremely interesting. So that's all I'm going to show with this. And then I'm going to have in a position of power right so my female character and then i'm going to rough in my villain and i'm going to start with shorter shapes and i don't know exactly know what this creature is going to be yet but we're going to we're going to start with that just blocking in simple triangular shapes already it doesn't look friendly and and this character is kind of i'm gonna have my sight line this way so the character is kind of looking this facing this way toward our main um hero right but lots of sharp edges so if i'm going to start to pull off things here all right so for ears real quick on the ears if I'm doing something in ears and I'm just going to say, there's my face, there's my head, right? So I'm, I'm looking this way. If you're doing human ears, what you can usually tell, and let's say here's where my nose is, right? And then there's my mouth and there's my eyes. Super fast. This is a super fast way to do this. So I've got that down the ears and you can tell on people really the best form of drawing that you can do to exercise. This is life drawing look from real life. And you can see that the ears sometimes sit right at about where the eye level is is the top of the ear and then somewhere around between the nose and the upper lip, you'll usually see that ear lobe. Right. And here's how simple it is. Don't think of ears as I mean, you could really do whatever you want and exaggerate it. But if I have an ear coming off the side of a head and I'm just trying to draw a simple ear. This is how I would do that. That's how I would pull that off. So notice that you have kind of the inside of the upper ear come down and then there's this part which, well, I'll show you on, I'll use myself as a model. Scott, may I have the con please? Thank you, sir. So if you notice in here, right, I've got the outside kind of the rim to my ear and then if I'm looking here, this piece here, which I don't remember the anatomy name, kind of comes in and then pops down. That's it. So you can go back to the drawing, Scott. So when I'm doing that, it's the same thing as in this part of my ear. Super simple, right? Super easy way to draw an ear. And imagine that connected to your face. You know, boom, there you go. Boom goes the dynamite. As somebody famous probably once said. They probably also spoke German, but I don't. But T does. All right. So getting back to my hero character so i've got a villain uh in the lower position also so i've you know that there's a kind of an elevated part to this where just visually i'm showing which one is probably more dominant and that is definitely going to be my female character now she's going to be looking off 
sort of down at this creature. Maybe I'm gonna make a female penguin. Ooh, a female penguin. A female, the penguin, which means they need an umbrella. Okay, so I'll start with that. There's my female, the penguin. <laughs> All right, so in your female character. Now, what I wanna pull off in my shapes here is I want friendliness, right? And I want strength. So I'm gonna combine some shapes of my circular, which can be ovals, the idea is rounder edges and four-sided objects. All right. Um, so here we go. I'm now in my design also. So I've got the my female character's jawline. And then we were just talking about ears. And so her ears are gonna be right about, so I have my eye line here, my eyebrows are come up, her ears come just above. All right, and if you have a question, pop it in the chat, unmute yourself, either one. Scott, if I don't see it, um, if you don't mind. Now, in this too, heroes have, heroes wear masks, right? And they wear masks to protect the ones they love, not necessarily themselves. So I am going to put a mask on my female character, like so. Right, so we'll dive in a little bit there. There's the mask on my female character. I've got a nose and we'll do lips. All right, kind of easy. I might add to that in like a mask or something. And I'm gonna start with that. Now, again, in, I think we're gonna go, I'm gonna go punk style, yes. So my character is gonna have a helmet kind of configuration going, which kind of like, if you saw WandaVision, which was awesome. And then I'm gonna have- I love WandaVision, it was great. Wasn't it? It was great. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm very excited to see what they, how they come, take that next with those two characters. All right, so I'm gonna have like a little bit of a punk thing going on here, kind of like Captain Marvel has in some of her comics. And then we'll do like a ponytail, like a super long ponytail. And what's magical about this ponytail is it emits a light beam. That's right, it emits a light beam. It's like a laser cannon. A ponytail laser cannon. Who would have thunk it? I did. Um, so T has a comment that random thought about superheroes in most movies. They do a lot of damage to whatever city, town, country they're in defending because they punch, kick, pow, laser to get the villain, right? Yes. Do you think the, the damage caused by them would be covered by the government since they are almost another branch? Of, I would say in some instances, T, yes. And I wonder who carries the insurance. Is it Allstate? That's not a plug for Allstate, by the way. I don't rep Allstate. All right, so I've got that down, right? Again, even in my design for here, so I'm, I've got more rounded shapes with her. All right, and then I'm gonna design out kind of costume. So I'm gonna go non-hard edges, but even in, this design, I want some boxiness to it. So I'm gonna have maybe some shoulder bands that are more four-sided. And even in like her upper body design, it's a little bit more. So I'm gonna blend like I said, foresight, it could be a trapezoid. Ooh, look at that, that's a $3 word for today, trapezoid. I'm gonna blend four-sided objects with my rounder objects, right? To create the suit. So you notice that even in this, I've got more boxier type because I want it to have a sense of strength to, that goes with it, which is what four-sided objects helped to connotate. 
And then I'll add a few little design elements. I'm gonna go a little arc reactor-ish with the circle in the middle. All right. And then obviously she's gonna to wanna to bend in places. We need the suit to kind of move a bit. So these little slats here, these rectangular slats can be like a collapsible blinds type deal where she's able to move All right, I'm gonna pull this back just a bit. So, now part of the design in this, again, is functionality. Like how would your superhero function in the suit that they're in? So even on like around where my elbows are and it has to bend, it's almost as if you had the accordion style um, hose, if you will, you know, like you can see like an outdoor hose, it's like an accordion style. So I'm gonna put that in and then I've got my gauntlets which go around your forearms also. Again, kind of doing a four-sided object around here. So while I don't have a, an Iron Man or Iron Heart, you know, kind of designed to, ooh, we could have drawn Iron Heart today. Um, and then I'll put fingers in because she's got her hands at her waist, right? And then for, for the waist part, I'm going to do where, got to have some functionality and how the legs bend a little bit. So we'll just do the design in like this. And that way, when I do the legs, which are going to be, zoom out. It's like protection, right? Kind of like a stormtrooper. You know how they have that armor on them, but there's spaces left open so that they can bend. So I'm going to do the same and on this side again i'm using boxier shapes four-sided object shapes stronger kind of suit that she's got on and then the curvature of some of my other shapes kind of help to i'm not going to say soften the look but maybe kind of add a little personality to it like she's a super strong superhero but you don't want to mess with her but she's also not a an emotionless you know just blowing stuff up and then i'm going to add circles and ovals into my design even in here they're functional so maybe they maybe these are like jet thrusters which speaking of i'm going to add them to the back of her calves so i've got kind of jet thrusters in here i've got jet thrusters in her gauntlets. This one likes to go to space. And then not totally flat footed, but I might change this up a little bit too in the in the shoes. All right, so kind of super quick. And then also I want an addition this one has a cape. Sorry, want a cape. Not every superhero has to have a cape, but kind of feel because it's getting warm out. At least it is by me, finally. 60 some degrees today. Um, that I would want to have my cape blowing in the wind. So there we have it, cape blowing in the wind. Not like the Elton John song of candle blowing in the wind. Originally done for Marilyn Monroe, then modified for the late Princess Diana. That's right. That's right, people. History in this class. Musical history. Okay. All right. So, T, yes. Curious about her powers. Does she have them? I'm going to say yes. And here is where I'm going to come out with the powers. And this is where you get to decide, too, in your character, like, where those powers come out. So, I'm going to say that she's got this energy this light energy that she emits right kind of like a laser beam but she can't totally focus it because if you know of cyclops 
and characters like that, right? They have to focus it out through ways because they can't totally control. So I'm going to say it's going to be kind of like that where she's got this energy inside and she has to have something to help focus that energy out. So that's what this is going to be kind of up in the chest piece. And then um, this is like the main kind of thing where she where she's able to emit a stronger beam here. And then when it doesn't have to be as much damage in her eye pieces in her mask is where she's able to visually do it as well. And then her ponytail, <laughs> her electric ponytail is kind of like a, a light whip, right? So she can it, it can grow into this gigantic thing. And that's kind of like a light whip. So that's what I'm gonna say. She's got this light energy she's able to use like a laser, but she has to concentrate it through the suit in order to keep control of it. Because every good superhero has some fallibility. Otherwise, it's not as believable. That has a belly button laser. <laughs> yes, why not have a belly button laser? You totally could. All right, so that's, that's, and I, let's, I'm going to, oh, who knows what the German word for laser is? Okay. Anybody? I expect T to know this. All right. Nobody knows the German. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. So T, it's just because I have a mad respect for your language skills. Um, so I'm going to say, I'm going to go something. I don't know. It's going to be, have something to do with a light beam, right? So something to do with a light beam. That might actually be her name, light beam. All right, T's looking it up. What is light in German or light beam? Look at how international we're getting. This is fantastic. All right. Liked. Interesting. All right, what about beam? Is light beam a word in German or is it just? So I'm going to go L I C H. L I -S T C H. Quick, somebody give me beam. What is beam? You can totally pick a different language if you wanted to, and we could really confuse people. Ooh. Lichtstrahl. Look at both of you guys, same time. Lichtstrahl. I like that. It's weird and it's interesting. Look at that. Crowdsourcing the superhero's name. Love it. So I'm going to write this down. Lichtstrahl. Although I don't have a very good accent when I do it. Um, I think I, no, I didn't spell that wrong. All right, licked strong. Well done. Props to T and Liliana and Heather Rose for a quick response. Licked straw. Okay, there we go. That's the character's name. Licked straw versus Lady Penguin. I haven't figured that out. Let's get into the villain part of things. So I want something sinister. I don't necessarily have to have a totally human form to it, right? But I do want to convey sinisterness to this all. So in that, I want to keep my shapes and my angles very, I want to keep it very angular. And in where I have kind of boxy shapes with round shapes and lichtstrahl. All right, thank you. I'll be with you in one second. Um, in whatever this character's name is, we're going, we're going a little, we're going the opposite. So um, I'm going to say that this one has no Ooh, look at that. Licked, licked craft is light force. That's interesting. All right. So I'm going to go triangular eye. It's going to be kind of robotic, but not totally robotic. So maybe my, my, my female villain in this case is a bit of a cyborg s creature. All right. I'm using angled shapes for everything. We got something in there with the mouth and then just one eye, kind of like Cyclops-esque, right? And then I'm going to add a little dimension to the head. I don't exactly know how all this works. Like I said, it's all kind of robotic, so we're going to put these in. All right. There's a little thing on the top. All right. And if you were to walk, if you were to look at this character coming down the street, you probably wouldn't say, hey, I bet they sell Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> no, no, they don't. They're there to eat all the Girl Scout cookies from everybody. All right, now I've got angular, and again, it's, it's kind of humanoid, right? So it's kind of humanoid, but not totally human-esque. And long, long, sharp fingers. 
long, sharp fingers because nothing says dastardly villain more than long, sharp fingers. Okay. And we'll extend this out a little bit. There we go. Okay, all right, so I'm kind of starting to feel some stuff come together. Now, why is this character so, so much of a villain? Let's just say they can never get the dry cleaning right. Every single time they started out as a villain because the dry cleaning just kept shrinking everything, which was maddening. And they went off on this whole villain thing and they just started destroying dry cleaning stations. I don't, it was, it was ridiculous. And so that's why we had to have our light licked straw character come in and defend the day against the ultimate in the destroyer of dry cleaning shops. All right. So what I want is something movable. And because I have this kind of humanoid robotic creature, I've got some, you know, humanoid features to it, like one hand here. I'm actually going to have this as a real hand on the other side. So this is what we're going to go a little Darth Vader. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do a real hand on this. Let's just say it's part of the jacket that wasn't ruined in the dry cleaning. And we've got some human hands, right? Holding the holding the umbrella. Avery mentioned a tip in the comments uh, in the in the chat about drawing the the character's body first and then the head. Yes. That can help. And you know what helps too is, all right, so small tip as we're kind of putting this hero villain thing together. Um, when you're looking at heads, if you look at somebody, like here's sometimes what I'll do. If I have a head, and let's just say I start out with a, with an oval on this. One, two, I'll go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. An average human, if you're starting with that as your, as your beginning point, will have seven to eight heads high, right? And then you'll have somewhere in the vicinity of like four of those heads are kind of hips down and maybe even a little bit higher than that. And then you have your upper body. You can break it down by seven to eight heads that way. Um, so like four, four heads high for the hips, three heads high for, you know, um, waist and upper body. But yes, you could always draw the head last if you wanted to, if that helps you easier. There really isn't a bad way to draw it or a wrong way to draw it. It's whatever you find most comfortable um, in creating your character. Okay, so I've got this humanoid character and I'm gonna give, well, I'm gonna have some tapered legs at the bottom, I'm not gonna make this part robotic. So we're gonna say upper body robotic, here's where it attaches, right? And then this whole head, you know, thing, and then it's got one real humanoid arm. And then we'll have, a, we'll have the boots that come out like so, right? So I've got humanoid legs. And then in the design period, so again, remember dry cleaning. So this was a bit of a fashionista. And I'm going to continue with angular shapes. Angular design. It doesn't look super friendly, right? I wouldn't look at this character and say, huh. The chocolate just floated out. What? Yeah, I know it did, buddy. Let's leave that here. Okay. Yeah. All right. And this will be like my penguin-esque creature, right? So, straw. Defender of the national, or the, I should say the international um, dry cleaning business. And then we have, what would be a good word for, who knows what, is there a, is there a, it doesn't have to be German, but somebody give me some language, a word for ripped clothes. Ready, set, go. Ripped clothes, torn clothes, whatever. Or tear, maybe tear. OK. 
Okay, so I've got a little bit of ground to walk on. You're gonna need to wait. And then we're gonna add a little color to this. So we're ripped, but ropa is closed in Spanish. Okay, so let's go like something. Oh, wait, who, George and Victoria, is that an actual word? It's torn clothes. Are you serious? Wow, I like the fact that it's complicated. <laughs> In German, all right, hold on. Let's go with Zerosin Kledung. It sounds good to me. We're gonna call him ZK for short, which really drives this character nuts because they like the whole name spelled out. They like the whole name. And when you don't use the whole name and you get the whole thing with you know the dry cleaning, man, it's just ballistic, okay. Ooh, that, that is good too. T came out with some Greek words. We should do Greek next time. All right, so I've got my characters down. Now, if, I'm, if, if I've got a certain feel to it, if you were to look at these two in an instant, like if I just kind of looked at them, I knew nothing about them, you can kind of get the feeling of which one is good, which one is bad, right? Uh, which one is maybe the in the more dominant position, which one is in the not dominant position. I want to add color to it briefly. So here's what I want to do. Um, I want to use colors in Lichtstrahl, right, that have that connotation of power and friendliness, right, that person's on my side. And then in Zerosin Kledung, man, I hope I got that right, um, we're going to use some more devious colors. So in this one, I'm going to go more reds and kind of fiery colors, blacks, um, dark grays, that kind of thing. So here's how I want you to do it. I want you to pick your color palette. I'm going to pick mine, and this one's going to be reds, blacks. You can follow along with me. And uh, reds, blacks, maybe I'll throw in some orange, maybe a little purple. All right. And then in Lichtstrahl, I'm going, I'm going golden yellows. I'm going to go teal. Shocking, I know, for anybody who has taken this class more than once. And uh, and then I'm going to add some friendlier, warmer colors to that, right? But with some power to it. So it's not going to be a dark blue, but I'll have some dark blue elements, main with teal and, and the other. So let's go with add some color. We're going to add color to the villain. Now, sometimes when I'm just doing a rough and I got to get it down, I'll use lines and I'll just pop in. I won't necessarily color color, but I'll use lines to put this in. So we're going to. Give it some shape. So if you had some design elements in your form, like I've got, now would be the time to differentiate that with color. All right, and then I'm gonna say this stripe here is red. There we go. Um, I'm gonna use some different shades of red also. All right, and put that in, and then I'm going to bust out my dark grays and my blacks and add color to that. So I'm going to go dark gray right here on the mask. And then I'm going to say that this eye right here is going to be like super bright red because it's almost, it's almost Borg-ish. Then I'll deepen my red. Now remember two in colors. So I'm gonna go with red. I'm gonna actually darken that color with a dark green. So I'm not gonna use a darker red to show shadow. I'm gonna go green. And then I'm gonna come back and layer again with red. I had the opportunity to go to Monet, uh, which was amazing. And if you look at how Monet does color, um, there is no, he doesn't use like just black to, to shade something. He uses a contrasting color it's quite fantastic so i can show some dimension here in my character design by shadows right i'm starting to break out different shapes so let's just say in the pants i've got gray in here and now we we've had some people in the past ask about shading and whatnot if i were to take this as just a base and then I'm going to come back and maybe I want to add a little texture in my color. I'm going to use a deep purple. And I'm going to use that to show some shading, right? 
So I'm not just using I'm not just using a darker gray or a black. I'm actually using a different color because if you look carefully at shadows, you will notice that there are different colors in those shadows. It's not just a darker version of that color. So for this instance, I'm going to use this deep purple and that's how I'm going to shade. I might use a might use a little black. But really pay attention when you're using color, which is why I'm celebrating Sarah Pacelli and um, uh, Georgia O'Keeffe this month for our Women's Artists Month that we're doing because I love, love how Georgia O'Keeffe sees color. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I love Sarah Pacelli's, um, the way she does human form, even um we're gonna take i'm gonna show you one a couple more pages out of one comic since it is comic month of sarah pacelli and her line work and just how she pencils in so it'll kind of give you an idea too on you know we had mentioned like human form and having some issues with that but she does some like robotic style creatures in here that are pretty fascinating lime green is the color of evil <laughs> yes ah yes Every witch has a bit of lime green in her, I think. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here on this creature right here on my. You can kind of get an idea of the colors. It's very sinister in that. I'm gonna focus a little bit on the hero character for the moment, seeing as it's already five sixteen, which is kind of insane. Time flies like this, and I'm gonna give my leaked. Strawl character. Man, I love that name. That should be a sticker. Okay, so I'm going to bust out here with some color separation and how her suit com comes to life in color. So that if I did see this, like I want a, an, I want a sense of hope and optimism in her suit, right? So I'm going to use kind of brighter colors and then I'm going to ground it with a secure color. So like if I'm using dark blues, if you ever notice banks use uh, dark, like they'll use royal blues or navy blues and stuff like that a lot because it is it, that that color right there is a very secure color. Uh, it's also doesn't have a ton of personality to it, but it's really not there for personality. It's there to show, um, you know, stability, that kind of thing. We do need stickers. Ooh, I'm going to show just because T said that I'm going to show you a sticker that I just designed and, and, and I'll bet, I'll bet you get it. I'll, I'll, I'll read it out. And then the first person that gets it, I don't know, I'll high five you at the moment. Um, for those of you also wondering, like did 200, where is 200? It's almost done. 200 is almost done. If you know what I'm talking about. And that's all I'll say to that. And that'll be going out soon. All right. So I'm putting in, some color into the suit, right? So I've got some elements of that. Great, super fantastic. Someone's calling me and I'm not gonna answer that because it's probably a spam call. Redwood City, yes, Redwood City, California. You know what they wanna do? They wanna sell me health insurance again. Look at all that you get to look forward to as an adult. People spam calling you about health insurance. Okay, so as you are adding color, now I'm going to add some elements here in kind of like a golden yellow. And I want it in her hair too, but I'm going to just, I'm going to peek out here with a little bit, and then I'm going to add a little dark blue to her suit. So maybe her gauntlets too have some of this color in it. And then the top of the gauntlet here, again, this is super quick um just to show you a bit of what you can pull off with color and how that helps when you blend that with your actual shapes that you're choosing um to give your character personality see uh cars extended warranty <laughs> i get that also all right so i'm going to use this dark blue here and this is real rough, but you'll get the idea, right? So 
it's a little it's a little sloppy but look at that my pencil sharpener ate the lead so i'm gonna have to knock that out so these these are the color choices that i'm going to pick for this i'm going to go in with like a teal kind of darken that up a little bit but so just on an offshoot, you kind of get the color differentiation, blues, warm yellows, that kind of thing against reds, blacks, you know, angular shapes. Visually, it comes together fairly quickly on maybe who's good guy, who's bad guy. Okay, I'm gonna add a little, we're gonna add a little flare of maybe a brighter yellow underneath. Okay, all right, hopefully this all makes sense. And I'm gonna do the mask white, white. All right, and then I'm gonna get the teal in the mask. So my character focuses, my character focuses her energy, has to focus it through the suit, otherwise it would go haywire. And in through this kind of circular arc reactor style thing in the mirror, this is like the big cannon, and then she's able to do it more concentrated in the eyes, which is what the mask helps do. Helps. Has raised her hand. Yes. Um, I'd like to share and make a comment on your villain guy. Um, All right. So your villain, hold on, let me. Your villain reminded me of a robot version of Zach Varmatek from uh, Wildcrats. <laughs> Yes. All right. I can. Maybe I was channeling a little bit there. Yes. Good call. And number two, a dragon room drawing. Love the dragon. I love the wings too. I like how it spans out. Very cool, man. Thanks. I kind of stole the pose from the book cover. That's okay. Imitation is good when you're learning because it helps us to kind of understand how things go. Nothing wrong with imitation. Thank you, Kat. You're welcome. Can you believe we've been doing this for almost a year now? And you have, by the way, Kat, have come a long way in your drawing, so I'm very impressed. Very impressed. All right. Can we see when, the, when she's shooting light out of her eyes because she might get dilated pupils from the amount of light? You're right. That could hurt. Henceforth, the extreme visine drops. And maybe that's maybe that's in a pout in a secret compartment on her utility belt that I haven't drawn in. Okay, so you get the overall dynamic of character. We did it not too bad in about an hour. Here's some little tips on ears, that kind of thing. But really using shape language to create help to connotate the character and personality of our characters, right? Of our superheroes and our villains and how we can easily see without too much extra, like if they look fairly similar, and it's like, oh, well, which one's which? It's kind of like Spider-Man. If you notice a lot of Marvel villains, all right, Scott, you can come back to me for a second. Um, a lot of Marvel villains will be the opposite of what their hero is, right? Spider-Man, Venom, that kind of thing, even though Venom's kind of not of an anti-hero. But if you look at that, that's kind of how that plays out. And then if you look at DC, um, some of their villains are like you have the Penguin versus Batman or Riddler, Batman, very different in dynamic. So it's really up to you on how you want to bring those uh, personality traits out of your hero and your villain or other characters in your set. So with that, I wanted to show some artwork by Sarah Pacelli. And I have another comic. As this is coming so about I am reading some fantastic comic comics lately that have got some really great storylines. So Scott, we can go overhead. Um, so this is from book three. So JJ Abrams, if you don't know who JJ Abrams is, think Star Wars seven, Star Wars nine, um, Super Eight, which is a great film. Uh, but if you look at how what I love about Sarah, let's see if I can do it without a glare is the way she draws. So we had a comment about ears and stuff earlier. So check out how Sarah puts her ears in on her characters. Here, I'll go down a little closer. And I, it's upside down on, for a reason because it's Spider-Man. But you can kind of see how the ears go, right? Ears drawn in, kind of interesting how that goes. Highly recommend if you really get into the stuff, draw comic book stuff as well because they've usually got a lot of great human form. And then this is what I wanted to show you with Sarah. So, I mean, check that out, right? So this is 
um, this is the main villain in this storyline. And just like we did, where we took shapes and stuff, like look at the triangles, you know, in if that in the sharp edges that you have in all of this. And obviously not just sharp edges because he's got three claws going through them. But look at the sharp edges and angles. Look at the color choices, reds, blacks, grays, that kind of thing. And you get that idea, it even weathered, torn, you know, clothing, it, that kind of thing. So you can kind of easily see not a good guy, right? And you juxtapose that with how she draws out like that's Mary Jane, that's Peter, that's Peter's son and stuff like that. So it's really cool. I love, if you get a chance, check out Sarah Pacelli. Um, because she does an excellent job with her characters. You can just kind of even see, oh wait, hold on, that didn't go down far enough. Right there, right? How you draw human faces, different angles and positions, somewhat looking down. That's Tony Stark, by the way, <laughs> right? That's Tony Stark, go figure. So um, I, I would recommend this. I really enjoyed reading this book, but you can get idea even up here. So I did a creature as my villain, like with some humanoid features this villain has humanoid features also right robotic so there you go all right you can come back to me scott so love this book love this spider-man series i thought it was fascinating i also love what they're doing in batman right now the colors the inking everything in it is absolutely fantastic um check it out if you like that stuff maybe you're really not into comics as much i love it for the art as much as i do really good story so it kind of helps to see how they write things out and then how they actually put color in. Um, yes, so T was like like the cover and the water reflection, absolutely. So if you just look at, here, I'll, I'll go back to this. If you look at that real quick, right? The reflections in the water and how that goes down, super awesome. Did he get stabbed? No, he did not get stabbed in this. Not that cover one anyway. So stickers, T, anybody? Can you read that? Right? Come on, now I can't take credit for that line. It's the best car on the lot, right? Ha <laughs> ha, best car steal. Scott, you can laugh, somebody laugh. Oh cool, I love Thank it. All right, there we go, Cybertruck vibes. So it's, it's the, you know what this is? It's the man DeLorean, come on now. The man DeLorean, the best car on the lot. See that, see that <laughs> element of, uh, of the, his helmet and stuff in there? There we go, people. Create all the time. All right, Lillian and Heather Rose got a kick out of it. That's good. All right, guys, so um, that kind of wraps today. Yes, Scott, thank you. These are donation-based classes. Uh, thank you guys so much for participating. It's a whole week of really awesome things with character. I highly recommend Lee, uh, Daryl, Nalene, and Mike. I love what Mike does, by the way, when he gets into character and the writing of those things. T, I'm gonna go to you first. And that, well, I'm going to let everybody show. So Nathaniel, I hope you didn't leave. Did Nathaniel leave already? No, he didn't. All right. So I'm going to go with T first and then we're going to, and then Scott, I'm going to let you pick all the way around the, around the room. Right. Go ahead, T. Because you said to make more characters and I have no self-control when it make, when it comes to making more characters, I got more characters now. So thank you. <laughs> yes. Good job, T. Thank you. So, you know you know, it's great. And I'm going to, I'm going to gush on you for a second too. Like all of you really that I've seen take these for almost a year now, which is incredible. You have all grown incredibly in not only your execution on how you create, but just in the stuff that you think up. And I'm super impressed by that because it inspires me in what I'm doing. All right, go ahead, Scott. So nice job T. It's Jay. All right, Jay. Hello. So I'm just kind of doodling a character. Hold on, leave that up there. I need to I need to increase my view. Sweet. So I like what you did too in the ears that I can see uh, on that middle sketch in the doodle and just kind of all the way around. I think that looks awesome, man. I love your face shapes too. Thank you. Very cool. Look uh, into the rose. Yes, ladies. Uh, here's mine. Check that out. I love that. I love the creature-esque in the one. And then, so your, your character on what would be your right hand kind of reminds me of Zelda. Yeah, kind of. No, I mean, it's not a ripoff. I just say I have that kind of feel to it. It feels very mythical, which I love. I think that's awesome. And I'm not just saying that so that I can feel hip to you guys and be like, look how cool I might be. 
No, no, I actually think it looks awesome. Very mythical, very cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm not ready yet. Okay, you're fine, no worries. Let's go to uh, Nathaniel. Can I do a final share? Yeah, everybody can do a final share, absolutely. See, here's what I love about this man is like you got some interesting line work and I find that fascinating. You got some cool line weight going on. It's a very interesting creature. So tell me, does it have a name? What do you mean creature? You know this character. Well, I'm just asking. Don't tell me you know this character. Come on, come on. I told I'm... you this character about a thousand times. Is it bingo? <sighs> bingo. It's super bingo. It is, it is super bingo. Good safety. All right, super bingo. Let's go to, where are we going next, Scott? Saif. Saif, hey, buddy. Let's see what you got. Um, hey, so this wasn't exactly in this class, but I guess I'll still share it. I'll share something else I did in this class. Um, so I, ha I made up my own game, which requires a lot of rules. So I accidentally made, used a circle stencil, so I, it reminded me of a letter, so I added two lines. I love that, man. And I love the fact that you created your own game. That's friggin' cool. And another thing I did, I just made some new worlds for my game. It's only two, but I, but I guess it was worth sharing. Absolutely, it's worth sharing. Those are cool, interesting little uh, creatures, man. Keep drawing the game. I'd love to see how that comes out. I have, I have fun kind of experimenting with that kind of stuff. All right, where are we going, Scott? Back to Liliana. Check that out. I mean, yours came out way better than mine did. All right, so I love the characters. Tell me what we have going on here. Um. I don't really know. I mean, this is, this is the villain, the heroes. Uh, she's got like a super speed and flexibility and stuff. She's got super strength. That's awesome. I love it, man. Love the color choices as well. And just the overall suit design. That's cool. I dig that. Well, well done, ladies. All right. Did we miss, if we missed anybody, now would be the time. If we did not then I am going to say Avita Sain. Is that oh, right? Oh, we did miss uh, Rose, Rose Brick. Hey, wait, or Samantha. Samantha. All right. We can't forget you. Let's see what you got. Hold on. Oh, check that out. That looks, I love the expression also. So tell me what we have going on here. So this is actually based on a comic I'm making. I have seven pages done so far. That's um, impressive. Okay. So the hero works for an agency that keeps control of this town that has been affected by a virus. And something happens in the town that Death Behind needs to work on. And so she gets assigned to go in and figure out what's going on. And so that's her in her nice getup. That's awesome, man. Love the design. I like the pose too. Very cool. And then here's one of the kids that were in the town and they're like, oh my gosh, this person's amazing. <laughs> and then this is the villain. It's supposed to be like a queen bee sort of thing. Yes, that is super cool, man. Love that. Way to go, Samantha. And good to have- Thanks, to have it's actually based on a show that's already around. Is Idea it? isn't mine, but the design is. You're building off it. I think it's awesome. Very cool. Thank you. Interesting stuff, man. Welcome back. All right. Um, so I'm going to say, did I miss anybody? I don't think I did. All right. Auf Wiedersehen, Air Tater Tot. No, it doesn't even sound right there. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that German down. You just watch. Um, you, I hope you guys have a great week. Please do take part in everybody else's classes this week because it continues to build off this stuff. Um, yes, I'm going to assume that Saif, what would you like, buddy? Well, so, uh, I didn't exactly do today's hero topic. 
I um, was wondering if that was bad or not, but um, I, I just remembered um, that I'm supposed to get out of my comfort zone with this class. So I'm going to try to focus on uh, the topic more. Okay. Well, you know what, dude? Um, I love that you're here and that you were drawing some stuff. And absolutely, I will encourage you wholeheartedly to push out of that comfort zone and try something a little bit new, even if it can be um, maybe it's a little different at first. Um, I think you got it, man. You've got some talent. you got some creative ideas. And I would love to see how that comes out and some of these other things. So by all means, Saif, uh, Saif, love to have you in here, man. And we'll certainly work on pushing that comfort zone. So I'm, I'm glad that you're here today, buddy. Um, can we share a drawing really quickly? We don't have much more to share. George and Victoria, yes. All right, you guys are live. That's gonna be me in about 30 minutes of how hungry I am. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, food. Yes. Oh, you'll need to turn your background off. You got to turn your background off. There, there we go. go. Nice. Let me get back to my speaker view on. Look at that. See, I like the fact that you thumbnailed stuff out also, right? Very cool. And you delineated between the two. Nice. Good job, guys. Just don't battle. Don't battle on live TV. All right, there we go. It looks cool. I dig it. Well done, Georgia. All right, guys. Um, thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you guys again next Monday. And I hope that you take part in other classes this week. I think I get a kick out of it. I'm going to try to jump in Mike Funt's class because I need to get moving a little bit and get my physical humor out. So you guys are great. Have a great week. And I will see you next Monday. Later, dudes. Oh, look Bye. at you show off. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.